Peloton of 5%. What's up, Discipline Investor? We got Benzinga CEO Jason Raznick here with us. The man, the myth, the legend, Tom Nash. Peter Schiff on the Power Hour with us live today. Interesting, different, unique, innovative companies. Mia, you are live with us on the Power Hour. What's up? Thank you so much for inviting me on. Jessica Billingley, that is the CEO of Aperna. The best trade idea resource out there. Yo, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Monday, Monday, we are back at it. You, you see behind us, look at this. We, we've got the nice Detroit background here. So, so you know, we're up and cruising. I see everybody coming in. What's up, guys? Drop a hello in the chat. Drop a like on the video. And, of course, share the video. That is the ask that I always make. Uh, and I was told today that we have a very special video. Uh, Producer Rohan. You want to roll that video to get us going, and then I'm going to give us the agenda and the first stock ideas of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode, we are sponsored by Status Money. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by Mejd Miksad. He's the CEO of Status Money. Mejd, thank you so much for joining us and doing this interview. How are you doing today? Very good, very good. Thanks for having me, Michael. We want to operate at the intersection of social media and personal finance. Most people don't talk to their friends, their family about their personal finances, but within status, you can actually communicate with a growing community now of 400,000 people. There's been a major misconception about what personal finance apps do. Um, and, and there was a misnomer from the very beginning. There has never been management involved in personal finance apps. If you continue to do everything that you're doing right now, how are you gonna look when you retire? All right, that was a banger to get, to get our Monday kicked off. I like that one. Guys, I'm gonna start today off the way that I start every single day, which is to remind you what the point of this show is. And this is supposed to be the best trade idea resource out there. That's what we're going for, guys. We're, we're, if we're not getting trade ideas going, both for myself, uh, both, both from, from the crowd, uh, from our guests, etc., it's not worth doing. So the first thing I'm going to ask, guys, I guess I already asked you to like the stream. Second thing that I'll ask today, drop the stocks that you're trading in the chat there. Let's get these tickers going. Let, let's get things moving on my radar for today. Uh, we, we have to talk about Coinbase. Okay, I know Coinbase is going to be the talk of the week, but but we have to talk about the Coinbase uh, uh, debut as a public company uh, in, in stocks for that. Uh, so, so I've got one new stock that I just got into and I'm going to pitch as related to Coinbase. Um, I also have a short idea to pitch. Uh, I've got two trade updates on swing trades we put on last week, tickers EBS and TRMB. And then I've got Apple and CCIV that are on the radar as well that we'll talk about today. Um, so it's a, a good amount of stuff to get through. We, we also are, are going to have three guests, three guests joining the Power Hour today, uh, k- kicking us off at 1230 today. We, we are going to be talking trader psychology uh, and, and just, just some of the mindset that goes into being a successful trader. Uh, at one o'clock, uh, we're going to see you have a public company that's involved in NFTs on the show. We've really been cornering this NFT space. Uh, so, so, so we've got another one coming up at 1 o'clock. And then Jesse Felder joining us at 1.30 today. And I see you guys' tickers there flying into the chat. I dig it. I like it. Um, somebody saying Rocket is moving off of lows. Okay, that's good for me. I need that one. Um but all right, let, let's just kick it off. Let's just jump straight into it and, and, and get the first idea of the show going. So so we we have a big event this year. We, we, have, we have the biggest, what I expect to be the, the biggest public debut of a stock uh, that will happen in 2021 on Wednesday. Coinbase, ticker C-O-I-N, will be going public. Uh, it, it's going to be at least a hundred billion dollar valuation. Let me, let me take you guys through some of these numbers out of Coinbase. They, they were absolutely monstrous. So, so in Q1, Coinbase put up 1.8 billion dollars of revenue and generated 800 million of net income off of that revenue. Okay, 800 million dollars of net income in Q1, right? And this is like like a high growth tech startup. A lot of times you see these things go public with 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 negative earnings, right? In Coinbase's case. 
They're, they're not only profitable, but massively profitable. Uh, again, $800 million of net income. I'm going to throw this one out to the chat. If you guys are going to get in on that, that Coinbase opening day action, throw me a one in the chat. If not, throw me a two. I'm curious where everybody is at with this one. And, and then the thing that, that's most important for me to talk about, the thing that I want to get to today, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, is let, let's talk about some of these ancillary trade ideas. So, all right, screen is up on the board. I've got a stock that I don't think we've talked about ever on the show. It's going to be the first idea that I am pitching today. I actually just bought it in the live portfolio recently. Ticker is... Oh, I don't have my drum roll readily available. Ticker is FTCV, Foxtrot Tango, Charlie, Victor. And guys, be, be listening to this one because I want to get some feedback where everybody is at on this pitch. But basically, this is a SPAC. I, oh, man. No chart load. Okay, let's try this again. All right, we're, we're buying a SPAC. Okay, I know that SPACs, a lot of these stocks have gotten hammered until we got some energy back into them last week. But, but what this SPAC is doing... Uh, is, is it's taking over eToro. If you guys don't know eToro, you should know them. Uh, they, they don't have a whole ton of brand awareness in the United States yet, yet but they are absolutely massive in, in Europe. Uh, ba basically, it is a social stock Forex crypto trading platform. Uh, in the US, they do not have stock trading yet, but they do have Forex and crypto. Um, ba ba basically, the idea here is that because crypto is becoming a bigger and bigger part of their business, especially as, as all the energy has flown into crypto stocks recently, uh, if, if the Coinbase IPO, or I guess not an IPO, if the Coinbase listing is a hit, uh, ticker FTCV, again, that, that's a SPAC that's taking over eToro, should do well. Um, and, and, and I'll give you, give you a couple numbers there. Uh, you know, eToro expects to do $1 billion of revenue in 2021, uh, you, you had Coin uh, Dan Loeb, his third point fund, right? B big activist hedge fund is involved in the stock. And last week just bought an additional million dollars worth of stock. Um, and, and then you, you also have the catalyst of the actual merger, right? The, the SPAC merger getting confirmed in eToro. So, so this is one of my sympathy plays into the Coinbase IPO. Uh, if, I, if I zoom us out to a one month chart here, you, you can see the stock already did start to get some of that run up uh, as Coinbase's valuation got thrown around in that $100 billion plus range. Um, but again, I, I'm entering this one on a swing trade. I, I think that, that the Coinbase catalyst is, is going to be a good one for this stock, especially to shed light on the company. Uh, again, I don't, I don't think that there's a ton of people in the US where, where the stock is going to be listed that, that, that are familiar with the brand. Again, they're huge in Europe. Stock trading coming to the U.S. some point this year. We just don't know exactly when. I think it's dependent on regulators. But but they do have a big crypto business, a big crypto market. When, when, when Coinbase debuts and the market rewards uh, some of these crypto brokerages, I, I would expect eToro to do well into that. Uh, the other one that, that we'll talk about for just a second right now, Voyager Digital. Of course, if you've watched this show before, you you know about Voyager. It's it's a, a stock that, that Jason and I have been in for, for quite a while this is the other one that is on my radar in into the Coinbase IPO. Uh, again, if, if, if the Coinbase direct listing goes well, and, and when I say goes well, there, there's two components here, right? You, you have the, the valuation into the listing, and then you have how shares trade on, on that first day of trading activity. This stock will do, do well as well. On, on both of these positions, the line that I'm going to be watching very, very closely is, is that opening trade for Coinbase, okay? If Coinbase opens, let's say at ten dollars, and shares start getting to to nine fifty nine dollars, the rest of the sector is going to get absolutely smoked with it. If Coinbase shares open at ten dollars and the stock rips up to fifteen, these ancillary plays again ticker FTCV, VYGVF will do well with that trade. Uh, so so on Wednesday when when we're expecting Coinbase to to go live debut as a public company, that is the line that I'll be watching very closely. Um, and, and trading into and, and out of those positions. I would expect the, the, the shares to start trading sometime around noon, one o'clock. There, there's sort of a, a couple precedents that I'm looking at for, for the time of day that, that, that the, the trade will start happening with, with Coinbase. One is we have the Palantir direct listing. Uh, Palantir, similar to Coinbase, did not go public via traditional IPO. And instead, they did, they did what's called this direct listing, um, which is similar to the similar to an IPO, and that the the shares are available for trading on a public market, but they're not offering new shares. There's not a big book building uh, 
process where they're going around to institutions and, and, and selling an initial allocation, et cetera. The, the Palantir direct listing happened pretty darn early in the day, maybe around 10, 11 o'clock uh, Eastern. On the other side, this is a highly anticipated debut. Again, I think that it will be the biggest in terms of valuation uh, and also the, the, the most heavily traded uh, new public company that we have this year. Um, and, and so, so that's working against it. Um, so, so again, guys, I'm, I'm bringing this one up now again, the, the Coinbase, we're not expecting shares to be available for trading until Wednesday, but I'm bringing it up now, uh, because if you want to get into some ancillary plays, you should have done it last week. If not today is the day to get in uh, again. I think it's likely that we'll see some sort of a run up into to the Coinbase debut. And then on the day that that Coinbase shares actually start trading, the line to watch is, is going to be right around that opening uh, trademark. And so I'm going to throw this one out to Zinger Nation. My pitch that the eToro play FTCV. Again, it's a SPAC that's taking over eToro. Uh, a company expects to do a billion dollars of revenue in, in 2021, which is a pretty pretty big growth number compared to Coinbase, which did 1.8 billion in just Q1. Uh, I want to know everybody's at that one. If you like it, throw me the one. If you don't like it, throw me the two. I'm curious where, where everybody's at there. All right. And, and then I, I see some other questions in the chat. Uh, what, what about like an Ebon or a Mara or a Riot? These stocks could get some action. The, these are, are your Bitcoin miners. Uh, so so here's an, oh, that one's getting smoked. Ebon, here, here's a Riot uh, up decently. Here's a Mara also up decently, right? The, these stocks are up. As Bitcoin is near an all-time highs again, it's over 60,000. All-time high print in Bitcoin, if you if you need that line. Is is sixty one thousand two hundred and fifty three dollars, I believe. Um, but 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 will, will these stocks do well with the positive Coinbase IPO? Uh, it's it's possible. I think it's likely. Um, the the businesses are less closely related. Uh, if the the Coinbase IPO could be big enough to actually move the price of Bitcoin either positively or negatively, uh, because you, you, you could see, I mean, Bitcoin's up 3% from, from the close of, of stock trading on last Friday, right? So, so you could actually see some energy going into Bitcoin in, in, into this IPO. So, so, so that could potentially do it as well. Um, so, so maybe, but, but I actually prefer getting these businesses that are a little bit closer and, and that's why I'm doing it with, with FTCV and Voyager digital. And I promise you guys now, we, we will not talk about uh, Coinbase any further until Wednesday. I know it's going to be all over your news feed. It's going to be all over TV. It's going to be all over your chat rooms. Uh, so, so we will not talk about Coinbase any further until Wednesday. The reason why I think it's important to bring it up today is because, again, if you want to get into these ancillary trades, you should have gotten into them last week. If you, if you didn't, then then today's pretty much the last chance. Uh, and then we'll, we'll be rocking and rolling from there. I don't really know why that was relevant, but I threw it in there. Um, and, and I see a lot of ones. All right. So, so you you guys are behind me on the eToro trade. First idea of the day, putting it in the bag. Um, let's see. Let's get some good sound effects. We, I'm still working through this this whole air horn. Um, let's see what we have here. On target. All right. Saying on target. So, all right, guys, I, I promised you that, that I would have four trades to talk through today. There is the first one down off the board. Um, but before we get to the next one, before we get to the next one, let, let's talk about Uber for a second here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull out a chart of Uber. And, and before we talk about Uber, I'm going to make the same ask that I made at the top of the show. I see more people streaming in, guys. We, we have 400, over 400 people watching this stream. We only have 49 likes on it. Come on, let, let, let's get the like count up. Let's share the stream. Let's get the ideas flowing. I said I'm dropping four trade ideas today. These are four new ideas that stocks that are, that are not already in the portfolio. Uh, the first one, I, I just did the full pitch on ticker FTCV. I have a short idea to bring to you. And, and then I already called out a couple other tickers. I'm going to give some thoughts on Apple and some thoughts on ticker CCIV. So again, guys, like the stream. Share it with your friends. Get 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 the uh uh you know the, the trade ideas, the tickers you're looking at in the chat, and we will keep it going. Um, and, and let's do this. I'll pull one out of that chat ticker EBON. 
Ebang, I, I see somebody keeps asking about this one. I mean, it's down another 9% today. This is a one-month chart that we are looking at. This thing is ugly, technically, from a chart level. Uh, my understanding is that they are a crypto Bitcoin miner. Is there news today? There's no news. Uh, okay, this could be interesting. The next week is fine. All right. Okay, so 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 this is probably good for for eBank. So so if you are in this stock again, ticker E B O N Echo Bravo Oscar November, uh, you see that the stock got hit last week by by a a report by Hindenburg. It's basically a bearish report on the stock. Um, the company came out and they said that they are planning on responding to that Hindenburg report early this week. It looks like the company response is not out yet. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that that you know th this this red candle here may is a result of of the Hindenburg report. Typically, when 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 companies put out their rebuttals to these, right? So let's say Hindenburg come out came out and said this is a bullshit company. They they don't have real revenues. Whatever it is, um, the the company will come out and defend themselves and they'll say, hey, th this report is misguided. It's off base for these reasons. Um, yada yada yada. Uh, and typically when the companies come out and publish their contradiction to that short report that the stocks get, get some sort of positive price action. Um, d does it always last? No, I think a lot of times actually it doesn't last and it gets faded. Uh, but, but if you're looking for a reason to swing trade the stock or, or hold on to it, that, that could be one catalyst. The, the fact that the company needs several days to respond doesn't seem like a great long-term sign to me. But again, my expectation would be that that when they come out, they, they issue that rebuttal, we'll at least get some sort of a pop on the stock. Um, but I mean, who knows when the bleeding will stop? Whoa, there we go. I, I'm not touching this thing. Um, it, it, it's just a little bit too too red for me to want to get into. Uh, but but if you're in it, you're giving it a go. There, there, there's a, a silver lining of hope and good luck. And I see Mr. Raznick on the stream with us. What is up, sir? I, I don't hear you. If you guys in the chat hear Jason, drop him the one. It, it could be a Luke problem. I haven't had anybody else talk yet, so it could be a Luke headphone problem. How about now, How about now Luke? Okay, yeah, it's that red box. You got to hit the button on it, you know? You got to hit the button. That That's the thing. So um, do we have any new like, graphics? I got to get on Michael Feehan and give us some new graphics here. We got our... You know, clean tech. You see our clean tech event that we have coming up. I saw that twenty second of April. But did you see the video that I made last night for it? That one. This. Okay, so one thing I would say from that video, Luke, what's the goal of the video? Get people to sign up, right? Yes, I, I would expect so. So I see the link at the end, but what if someone is in a rush? I think the link should be in the bottom right corner throughout the whole video. Mm -hmm. Whenever they, maybe it's too much to it, but I like the music. I though. think we need to make a little bit of the can't miss aspect as well. Yeah. You like, know, like, 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 because what the event is, I mean, it's a sexy angle, right? I mean, it's it's the 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 companies that are redefining the future of how our world is going to get energy, right? Every, everything from from electric vehicles to EV components to to new energy sources like hydrogen, like this is the future. D don't miss this. Get get in on this early. I think that that's that message needs to be conveyed as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. There was a copy yeah. issue too, so it's close. It's close. There's a copy issue. I don't know what the heck you're talking about. There, okay. there was uh, a phrase that I think was missing a word. Oh, wow. Okay. And then the other thing is like also if you look at our previous event when we had these company on like FUV, look at their stock price from when they were on last to what it is today. 
I mean, that's the FOMO effect. So I don't know who made the videos, but like show the people that came to our previous small cap event what they missed by not being there. You know, why is Matt Kolb calling me on text? I mean, we're on the show. He's super bullish. A H A C. Wait, wait, yeah, put him on. Let's get oh. his best stock pick. I've been oh. asking him to do this for like two months, and he keeps telling me he can't do it. He's way bullish on A H C. He heard me talking about it. I don't know how he heard me talking about it. I didn't talk. Right. Matt. Well, hey, let me get you off my Bluetooth because it's uh, one second. Matt is the guy who, um, you know, he loved uh, INSG. Matt, I did send you some text from what related to INSG, but you didn't respond. But anyway, um, hey, 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 Webcoin and stuff. We're going to talk VTN in a minute. I know that's one of my favorite stocks on the market and it keeps going up throughout the show. That's why I came on to talk about it. But here we go. Uh, I got Matt Kolb here. He wants to talk um, a hack. Will you put on a h a c? A h a c. So Matt, all right. Why Al do you Alpha Healthcare? So, so here it is. And and you know what? You know I bought it, right? This is a one no, month I mean, chart. I heard about it from somebody else. So. Who'd you hear it from? How'd you know? I, how'd you know that this was my stock? Um, somebody, one of my good buddies is like all in on the warrants. Uh, a h a c w. That's how confident he is. He's been trying to get me in on this. So there's a stock called Derm Tech. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. But Matt, okay, guys, guys, Derm. So. The Dermtech and AHAC serve us uh, have the same principles. Dermtech Dermtech is a rips a ripster yep, stock. Yep, yep, it's the it's the strips, you know, for mel melatonin um back away from the mic please. Wait, okay, it's my melatonin? Too long. Mel um for cancer no, I cells. For, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, m uh, meloma, you oh, know. Yeah, multiple so, meloma. Yeah, right. so so the same principles behind AHAC are the ones uh, Dermtech. And you could have bought Dermtech like at $4. And it's at, what's Dermtech at now, Luke? Dermtech. In the DMTK, 50s. DMTK, $46. In the, fi in the yeah. 50s. It hit 85, though. It hit 85. So my, so my buddy who was trying to get me a Dermtech, it's my biggest regret. I didn't buy it. It went from 10 to 85. He got very wealthy off of it. He goes, this one's going to be bigger than than derm tech it's been, it's been the same sponsors and it's a spac so you have limited downside they have data on 420 jason do you know they have big data coming out on 420 i do not know that it's from five years worth of data is that in our so, catalyst calendar so, luke yeah so the, yeah so on, on april 20th Good check. they have five years worth of data right so the data is bad right you can, it'll probably bottom out at 980 but if the data is good that's that's the catalyst to bring it 20, 30, 40, whatever. I, I, I don't know. It depends on how good, it, you know, I'm not a biotech person. So, so for me to get involved, I have to like the story and I have to trust the person involved. And, uh, you know, so I'm just starting to do my research. I'll send you over a report from, uh, from Lake street later on. But, uh, I mean, for me, the, the risk reward when something, uh, you have about 10% downside to about, you know, hundreds of percent upside, that is really, really good then you got to play it. Got it. Luke, I am on your FDA counter. I don't see the AHAC. I don't see it either. And you know right. you could do it. You know you could filter by tickers in the top right corner, bottom right, yep. you know. Okay. Um, I don't see it. So All right, we have, we, it hey, Cole. Wait, what show am I on right now? <laughs> we, 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 we have uh, the Luke's full. Luke's here too. We, Luke's here too. We have the, you can't hear Luke though. We have the full FDA calendar now. We have our own FDA calendars. Full amazing calendars. Um, the Chris D Chris Delaccio says um, AHAC has promising tech and a bunch of pa uh, patents. Okay. All right. Well, so how about this? Cold yeah, one away. Okay. I guess he fell. Asleep. We, we're we're 15 no, minutes into the show today. We already have two pitches. All right, but PCV, AHAC, so, so and we have cool. at least three more pitches. You got a today. catalyst. You got you got regenerative medicine. You got five years worth of data. And you got limited. So, like, I don't play biotechs into data because the risk is so big. But the fact that you can always give it back at 10 bucks, you know, like, like I mean, uh, my buddy thinks, okay, it, it'll bottom out 980, 990 if the data is so so. Uh, I mean, the person, the, the company that bought this SPAC, they had to have looked at the data beforehand. For I mean, sure. they'd have to have sent an NDA. Why, why you know, you're not going to go all in on. <laughs> On a biotech that has really big data coming up, they don't have kind of a good idea of you know what they're looking at. That's kind of my thought process. Yep, and and I, and I see too on my Benzinga Pro Lake Street initiating coverage of the buy rating and twenty dollars price target. Got yeah, it. Yeah, totally yep. makes sense. Cole, Cole but it makes sense. It makes sense. They're uh, Luke's talking, but you're, you're I'm wearing a headset, so you don't hear anything. 
So, oh, got it, got it. So is this why you called me about this biotech? Yes, exactly. Because, uh, yes, my buddy was like, uh, Jason was talking about AI. And I, uh, so I was like, I had to give you a call and, you know, get, you, get your thoughts because, you know, yep. it went pretty big myself. Yeah, if, big. dude, what you should do is Google or go on Benzinga and type in the symbol because we have it in an article that Renata wrote. It was pitched on uh, Josh Brown and I do a clubhouse on Friday at 3 p.m. It's called it's called Boiler Room. Um, you know, if you have an iPhone, you can download and pitch us. ideas. I know you don't. I know you don't. I know you don't. Cole. You can pitch us. And um, and then um, that. So we have an article on Benzinga. See right there. Yep. Luke has it up and it talks about this one, like Planet 13 Holdings and a bunch of different ones. And then, Cole, I'm about to talk about a stock BTN that is about four percent of my portfolio. And it's up 9% today. And I'm in the power hour. And I just want to say, I told you so, power hour, because I kept talking about this forever and ever and ever and ever. BTN, you BTN. Did, and I, and I, didn't, I didn't get involved. So I don't know why. Right. When I have high conviction ideas and people don't get involved, I don't get it. Like LESL, I went crazy on that. 60 cents, uh, when uh, Voyager was at 60 cents, I went crazy on that. Um, TAP, I, got, like, I, I have certain high conviction ones. Funko, FNKO, it's up 25%. Voyager was just massive. I know, I know, massive. but people, I don't know. And then I have some that are not as high conviction, and then those are the ones that are riskier, but, I mean, I, whatever. So, anyway, all right, now I got to go do this trade and talk about it. I guess who's not here. Oh, we have a guest coming on, I see, too. Uh, wait, my win, my win stock is down, though. I'm still down 4% of win. Wow, I should buy more because... Vegas was packed this weekend. I'm buying more win right now. Uh, I was in Vegas uh, three weekends ago uh, for March Madness, and I couldn't even move. I was shocked at how busy it was. All right, check this out. Uh, Uber and today. The room rate was insane. I mean, we were paying 400 bucks a night. <laughs> wow. Okay, check this out. Uber today. At the, at the Cosmo. They, so, they, but, I mean, they, they said still, I that a company in, gamble still. <laughs> in, in, in March 2021, they, they had right, guys, uh, I'm, I'm, more I'm, I'm, bookings I'm, than I'm, any I'm, other I'm, month in company history. So, so pre-COVID, et cetera, not just like it was their best month since COVID started. They, they said they had more bookings in March than any other month in Uber history. And that's a, like, like, like Europe is totally locked down right now. Okay. So and Luke, is popping. No, that, that's that's a, uh, obviously a nice bullish thing. Okay. So, Luke, before we bring on Mike, can we do BTN real quick? Yep. Let, let's do it. The, you, you, so, we'll do – guys, heads up. We'll do BTN. I'm going to give you a rundown of what we have to look forward to in the day. Now we have a very special guest coming on with us. Okay. So you're giving the rundown after BTN or, yep, or before? It. All right. So you guys know I've been talking about BTN for a while. Um, BTN is a holding company of several different companies. Well, today, if you uh, Luke pulls up Benzinga Pro and clicks on the news item, um, makes it a little bigger so I can read it to you guys properly or I can go to my sl my Slack. All right. Here uh, we go. So balance time is strong. Um uh, we talked uh, Cal Sermonera. Um, the shares are um, higher after news that Greenforce products to buy units from uh, Rainier. Ballantine owns seven seven million shares of, of Greenforce. Um, so seven million shares of Greenforce, which is uh, a reason for this big bullish move. OK, the other one that is also up today. And I own both, so I just want you know where my bias is. I'm not like trying to talk my own book, but just so you guys know where I'm at. Um, we pull up symbol, and we don't have the news on MM Pro. I will tell them to do it, but FGF. See, the, this news is not even out on Pro, but I will get it there. FG Financial. Wow, FGF. that's a wild card. Why is it a wild card? What's up with you? Look, look at the chart. Check it out. Can you see my screen? Uh, I'm oh, looking wow. at one month. You see the stock went from 475 to 10 to 567. In one month? No, no. That's I've only, was there a, was there a dividend then? That doesn't make sense because I I go okay. So that's what you're saying. In one month it did that? No way. It's so wild. In the middle of the month, here. Look, look, look at the chart. I'm looking at the chart on on yeah. E Trade. It shows Maybe the exact. Maybe have a bad chart. I think you do. Something's wrong there. It's not well. No, yeah, you have. You, I, wait, hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah, you have a bad chart. It's okay. It's it, it, it's a nice upward progression chart. Okay. So I'm not sure. So anyway, FGF is also up today. This is also one of the ones that's that's re, it's related to BTN because Kyle Simonera, um, uh, Simonera is behind it as well, and this one is up because because 
It's up because they priced the Adele IPO last week. A-L-D-E-L got priced last week. And FGF owns part of that. So those are two stocks. BTN that I own a, a decent amount on. Um, and I'll probably own D BTN for the next six months. So that's the reason. Up 7.9%. It can trade in a range from two and a half to three. Do I think it, do I think it hits four dollars before it hits two? Yes. Um, and those are two stocks that I just that they're up. I own them. And Leslie's is also up, but that's just one percent. Um, oh, oh, what's OLN? That's up. Le Le Les Leslie's. We we have data coming out soon. We'll yeah. Talk about Leslie's later. Yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Sorry, we have the guest. All yeah. Right. All right. So 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 if you're just joining us, heads up of what we have coming on today. Oh, by the way, Loop, they're seeing the same chart on Thinkorswim too. So I don't know what's up with that FGF. I gotta look into it. All right, well, let's look into it. Uh, but but we have three more trades, right? We, we have three down, three more to go. But before we conclude this show, we're, we're going to have our chat challenge. We, we have a public company CEO who's getting into NFTs. It's not a story that's widely out there, which is why we're going to bring them on today. And right now, we are about to bring on a very special guest. And guys, if you have not liked the stream yet or if you have not shared the stream yet, be a good member of Zinger Nation. Let's get this thing going. We want to get the community up here so we can keep doing this. And now we're going to hold over to our guest. Mike, what's up, man? How you doing? Amazing, man. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on and joining the Power Hour. Uh, uh, anything especially exciting in your life today? I don't know. It's, it's Monday. Week's just getting rolling. Oh my God, there, there's so much exciting stuff going on all the time. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got the, the Trade Vault coming up, Trade Vault Summit coming up in about two weeks. That's on April 23rd. Uh, myself, Jason Greystone, Akil Stokes, uh, Brett Steenbarger, Mike Belfiore, uh, Austin Silver, a uh, lot of other people. Can't wait to be on that. Okay. All right. That's awesome. And, and you are, I'm guessing, going to be homing, honing in on some, some trading psychology, some trading mindset type items. Uh, yes, Is absolutely. Is that a good assumption? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, last year, uh, November 4th, on my birthday, we released it, the Mara Mindshift Guide. Can't believe that that actually came to life. <laughs> well, like I, I would never have thought that in a million years, uh, like, like if you spoke to me, even five years ago, that like it wasn't even on the radar. Like okay. it's crazy how things change. All right, so 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 tell us about it, or, or give us some of the principles. I don't know, like like a quick one two uh, out of the book that that we could all take into our trading. Yeah, absolutely. So all of our decisions are belief driven. the The problem with that is when that, you say all of our decisions, do you mean all of us as traders or are like uh, making all of us as traders, like... all of us as human beings? Uh, okay. Like every decision that, that we make is uh, driven by some kind of a belief. We acquire these beliefs uh, in a variety of different ways. Some of them we opt into uh, as you learn or go through a course as you're watching this, uh, learning for, from you guys. Uh, some beliefs might come from a parent uh, or as somebody else as we're children. And if we don't go back and review what our beliefs are and see if they are leading us closer to or further from our goals, then we're running on autopilot and that can become very problematic uh, in trading. Uh, we have two major categories uh, of beliefs. We have trading beliefs, we have money beliefs. Sometimes they can clash and if we don't have an awareness of what they even are, then that's when traders tend to make the same kind of mistakes over and over and over again. And that's what, what prompted the, me to write the book. So, 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 so given, given that we have these beliefs, I mean, how, how do we get out of it, right? How, how do we break out of making these, these same issues over and over? Like, like I know one that I have, which is that I hold on to stuff way too long. I'm actually proud okay. of myself. I had two trades that closed this morning, and we'll get to those later in the show. Right, two trades that closed this morning because the thesis broke. It didn't work. But more mm -hmm. often than not, like I'm just like stuck here holding the bag. All right. So the, let's start with that. Well, why do you think that you held on too long? Well, why? So, so I, I, I get, I'm on hope, you know, 
I'm like, all right, there's two parts to this thesis, one part unraveled. I still have the second piece there. You know, let, let's keep it around for that one. Let, let's see if we can get that second part of the thesis to play out, et, et cetera. Mm. Is it, it's something along those lines. Okay. So when we start to deconstruct, like, why, oh, like, well, why is that hope even there? Right? Like, why are you hoping for the trade to, to go up instead of following? Uh, did you have a plan of when you would exit the trade? Yeah, yep. Yes. I, I, I typically you, have a plan. I'm just okay. not disciplined on it. Mm. Okay. So why do you think that is? Uh, I, oh God, I don't know. Uh, it's like, goes back to the hope idea. You know what I mean? Like, I'm mm. like, all right, the thesis is blown. So there's this other thing that might be going on for it. Is that thing going to hold out for us or what? So the, this is the kind of thing that, that like, the, you're not alone. At, and, uh, and thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Like there, sure. there's, a, there's a lot that tends to go through our heads uh, when we're trading it. And it's things uh, like, just like, well, what you said, um, part of it is uh, like, having some kind of a thesis, we put our money in, uh, then the trade starts to work. If it stops working and we are not focused on simply executing a plan, then there could be a lot of different things running through our head. It could be like, oh, well, there's, could be fill in the blank of any number of reasons why a trade might start to move this way or that. Damn, that's a big drink. <laughs> you got to stay hydrated, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Jeez, when, that, when you do the second like edition of the book, right we're gonna we're gonna do a chapter on hydration. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll I'll co-author it with you. Oh my god, um, but but yes, yeah, seriously, the the main idea then is to figure out why why are we hoping? What other things are coming into our field of consciousness to distract us from what the original plan was? The the original plan would have been simple, right? Uh, the original plan is if price moves up to X, then we sell. Mm -hmm. If price doesn't and starts to move out, roll over, then we would have a plan for that too. Or was there a plan? I, I don't want to assume. But yeah, I mean, there, there's typically a plan like that. And again, it, it like, I don't know, it, it falls through. Like, like maybe so, it's like as simple as I just need to put stops in, right? That could be it too. Like right away. As soon as I put it in, boom, the stop is on. I always say the stop, like, all right, I'm going to stop out of this thing at 78.50. Uh, and then I see it tick to 78.40. And I'm like, eh, it's not that far off the stop. Let's let it ride a little longer. And then all of a sudden we're at 77. I'm like, all right, just got to mm. close this thing. One of the things that, that I advise traders to, to focus on uh, is to focus on the uh, well first to, to gain awareness of what the beliefs are then after that uh, to develop in each of the eight core trading skills i believe that there's eight core trading skills that everybody yeah. needs to, to master in order to achieve trading success uh, those eight core trading skills are as follows uh, number one is trade analysis most people know about that one and that's kind of where it starts and ends for, for most people but there's a lot more than that there's trade management there's portfolio management uh, how much risk are you going to take in the portfolio there's position sizing there's back testing journaling there is um oh, oh my god I, I can't believe that i'm like uh <laughs> Dude, sorry, you're almost there. And, and I'm going to ask yep. this one out to the group too, guys. If, if you guys have the same problem as me and you hold on to the losing trades too damn long, throw me the one in the chat. If you don't have that problem, you have some other problem, throw the two. I'm curious everybody is at with that one. And and, and Mike, what, what about goals? I, I know I know a, bi a big part of what you do is, is you help traders identify goals for their trading. How, how do you, you get people through that process? Well, uh, the first part of it is to, to figure out what the goal is and to figure out why uh, they have that goal. All right. So uh, let, let's uh, do you want to be the, the test subject again? Put, uh, make me the test subject. Awesome. So uh, what kind of goals do you have for your trading? I, I want to, to outperform the S&P 500, S&P 500 by at least 2% a year. 
by 2% a year. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, why is that? I, I, I don't trade for income, right? I've, I've got a, a, a job building here at Benzinga, uh, oh. but, but, but I do it right to, to compound in investments and savings. Um, and, and I know that, that, Hey, if I can beat the S P 500, it, it's worth me spending energy on versus, Hey, just throwing it in the basket of ETFs and calling it a day. Mm, interesting. All right. So I might be it, sort of, sort of weird because I'm not, you know, like, a again, I'm not trading for my income. It's more I, investing and trading for a little bit of fun. It, yeah, no. And that's perfectly all right. Like that any goal or any goal any belief out like that they're, they're all okay uh, what we want to do is have an awareness of why do we like what the goal is and why is that goal important to us because well, what can often happen too is you know, we'll come up uh, with a goal forget about why that goal is important and then start to do things that are not leading us towards that goal uh, like that that's what happened to me a long time ago well, when I first started out uh, like uh, I just had the goal of, or my idea about trading was you have a little bit of money, you put it in the market and more magically pops out the other end, uh, given X amount of time. I learned the hard way that that doesn't really work. I started trading back in, uh, 1999 and I okay. had, I had no idea about the NASDAQ or tech bubble or any of this stuff. Just thought that. Dude, do you remember your best and worst trade from that time period? Yeah. Your best and worst trade from the, the dot-com bubble? I always want to know those. Um, so my worst trade, so I walked into my local bank. I didn't even know how to buy a stock back then. I just walked into my local bank and I asked them, hey, I want to buy some stock. And they're like, whoa, whoa, kid, they, what you want is this. Uh, and they showed me some mutual funds. So I read up on the prospectuses of the mutual funds and I'm flipping through it, flipping through it. Manager walks by, he's like, hey kid, well, what are you doing? Oh, that other guy handed me this. He's like, nobody, nobody reads those. Oh, okay, so I'm flipping through it a little bit faster and then I pick a few of them. I pick a, like two stock funds uh, and a bond fund and I thought that, uh, all right, I've got the pros managing it for me. Uh, I'm very well diversified and uh, I'm good to go. So about six months go by. It's like I buy it in January, uh, checking in uh, in June, and it's up about ten percent. And I'm like, oh man, I'm a genius! <laughs> like not not knowing that uh, the Nasdaq is on this tear, but um, just didn't think I, I wouldn't get that in my in my savings account. So I think I'm a genius. And then uh, I'm going through my. Uh, my bachelor's degree and things start to get a little bit more intense and I forget about uh, uh, the the mutual funds. But hey, you know what? It, it's being run by professionals. Uh, I'm widely diversified and I've got loads of time on my side. Mm -hmm. Then I graduated in 2002 and I didn't have double the amount that I had put in like I thought that I would. I didn't even have what I started with. I was down about 20% from that initial starting point. I'm like, what in the heck happened? Okay. Time on my side, yep. diversification and uh, pros managing it for me. And then I took my money home. I took my money out. I went home and I cried. And that was my intro to, uh, uh, to the market. Okay. Yep. Well, I think we, we all have some sort of story like that. And yeah. I think those, those early stories are, are always helpful. And, and Mike, we, we've got to move on in, in just a couple of minutes here. The link to the book is in the chat, but, but Mike, any, any final words of advice or wisdom that you can share with the group? Uh, yes, if you are just starting out uh, trading, then the thing that you're going to want to do is focus on skill development first, and then consistent profits uh, will follow that. Focus on skill development first, and then, uh, the money will follow. Don't worry about making money or right off the bat. Everybody loses when they first start trading. Losses are completely natural and a part of the game. Um, you could win uh, even with a 50% win rate. Uh, all you need is to have your winners be bigger than your losers and a 50% win rate will do it. All right. I like it. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Guys, link is in the chat. Check out the book.
Uh, we, we got Mr. Ruel Black, uh, who, who, who hosts the show on this network a little bit later tonight, saying that he loved the YouTube that you do with Patrick Walker. Check that one out too, guys. Awesome. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Thank you, sir. Talk soon. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. All right. All right, guys. Uh, coming back into the idea session. Uh, smash that like. Share the stream. I think that I'm actually going going to try to 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 do two things at once in a second here. We have a jam packed show. I, I promised you guys three more stocks, three more ideas that I would talk about. We already have three on the board, so 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 let's keep it clipping. I'm going to talk through not the ideas yet, uh, but but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get to two trades from last week that I closed out. One for a winner, one for a loser. So so let's throw those up onto the board. Uh, to talk about why we chose to close those trades, what, what went right, what went wrong. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to throw out the chat challenge. Can, can you, can you roll the video for me, producer Rohan? Will I get the sheet shut, set up? Zinger Nation is going head to head to head to head to head every single week. What is the best performing stock of the week? Boom. All right. There it is, guys. Uh, link is going into the chat now. You have it. Spamming it in there. If, if you are new to this show, it, it is time for our chat challenge. Uh, this is where Zinger Nation, we're, we're trying to figure out who's the best stock picker in the group, competing for some awesome Benzinga prizes. Not only do you get bragging rights to the rest of our YouTube community here, uh, but but you get what, uh, let's do this, Benzinga track jacket this week. Boom. Executive decision. That is the prize. Check it out. I, I have this the sheet pulled up on my screen. If I go ahead and I share that, there we go. All right, hop in here. Very simple. Name goes in column A. Stock goes in column B. All right, do not write over somebody else's name. This is an open sheet. You don't have to go write bad words everywhere. That happens sometimes, okay? Uh, and then check this out. I'm also going to do a quick little Google Finance lesson. Da, 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 da. All righty, this may be small, but I'm going to give it a go. Uh, in Google Sheets, there are some very cool tools that you can use to retrieve stock market information. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the a, a super simple one, which which is to find the price of a stock. So 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 check this out. Follow along. I'm going to hit the equal sign. Then I'm going to type Google Finance. Going to hit open parenthesis. I'm going to go over and select the stock, right? So I'm picking cell B4. That, that's the one that's in orange on my screen here, ticker OSG, comma. And I'm going to type the word price. And with that, check this out. Boom. It returns the price of this ticker OSG right here. And then we can go ahead. We can take this formula. We can copy it up. And we can also copy it down through the end of the whole sheet. And then as you all type in, oh my God, somebody hard coded over mine. Google Finance. That was very rude. Uh, price. All right, there we go. And as the tickers get populated, the, the prices will populate as well. And if you're ever wondering how do I have the price of everybody's stock here on the day, that, that's how I do it. No warrants. I see somebody trying to sneak a warrant in there. Okay. You no know, no no dollar signs. Just put in the, the ticker. And there we go. Now now we've got a nice little Google Finance lesson, guys. We will leave this sheet open for the next 45 seconds or so. Uh preview of what is to come. Uh, I'm about to show you guys two trades that I closed that that were put on during the show last week. Talk about those trades. Uh, I've got three more ideas that I want to talk through. I'll, I'll give the sneak peek. One of them is CCIV. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll share some thoughts there. Um, and, and then we, we've got another guest coming up. CEO, public company involved in NFTs. Very interesting. But all right. Well, while you guys are populating your stock tickers of the week, on the left-hand side of the screen here, I'm going to pull up two charts. First one, TRMB, Trimble. Uh, let's pull up a one-month chart. So this is a one-month chart, which I believe 30-minute candles on here. Uh, 
We we got into this trade last week, guys. Uh, our average price was somewhere seventy seven ish dollars per share. Uh, we we saw the stock running up into some of this previous uh, uh, resistance that it had. Uh, so, so, so that was what we had on the chart side of things. On the story side of things, we saw the stock had been rejected at the same level over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, but then it was the added as the number one position in Kathy Wood's Arc X Space ETF. So, so that was sort of the the thesis was okay. Hey, the chart keeps running up into this level. Now it finally has news. It's in this Kathy Wood ETF. It, it's going to become a little bit more, a little bit higher profile. Um, it's going to become a news article. It might get on TV, et cetera. So we went ahead and we hit the stock long. Uh, we, we got a nice little $5 run. We closed trading in the stock right around 83 bucks a share or so. So, so that is one for the winners. If you guys followed me into the triple trade, drop me the one in the chat. I'm curious if anybody else made out on that one. A nice little, you know, it's a nice little 10% trade in, in five or six trading days. I'll take that all day on a swing trade. And now let's go the other way. We're going to go the disappointing way. Ticker EBS. Let's look at it. Same one month chart, 30 minute candles here. The 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 move on EBS. I, I said I'm this is a risky play. I don't normally try to pick bottoms. I did. If if you look at the chart, this thing is ugly. Stock was at about 93 bucks. It, it was down to to somewhere around 76 or so, 77 when we got into the trade. Basically, what, what happened to the company what was they were the ones who screwed up all those Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, uh, you know, f- future vaccine deliveries. They're, they're the company that produces them. They made some sort of mistake with the ingredients. Big screw up. Stock gets hammered. Uh, we, we saw the stock resting on, on some previous support. If we zoom out here, right, the stock was right around here, holding on to this low right here. Some 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 previous supports must have been around 78 or so when we hit it. Company came out, said it's not going to in fact impact their 2021 financials. I like that. Uh and then sure enough, we missed. We 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 missed on the EBS. Yep. No good. Close the trade. Whatever. We're d- down a couple percent in it. Uh, you know, we, we made more on the positive Trimble trade than we lost on the EBS trade. So for two swing trades that we put on last week live during the show, I will take that. And that is the move there. And guys, if, if you are did not put your answer into the chat challenge yet, time is running out. We're going to be clipping over to our next guest in just a minute here. Um, and I see somebody in the chat saying, man, who picks uh, bottoms gets sticky fingers. Yep. Yes, exactly. Stinky fingers. Heard that one plenty of times. I did it. I gave it a go. It didn't work out for me. Uh, but again, guys, last chance on the chat challenge. Throw your guests in there. We've got maybe 80 or so people. And then I will be locking the sheet. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We are not only doing trade ideas every day, but we're also coming back. We're looking at the chat challenge, seeing who's up, who's ahead. If you want to win the Benzinga track jacket, maybe even we'll send you two. If you have a significant other or child you want to give one to. Maybe even we'll give away two, but that is the move there, guys. Um, and and so last last second on the chat challenge. And producer AB, I saw our guest pop in. He's gone now. I, I don't know if you want, you want to make a dial and, and try to figure that one out or, or otherwise. Uh, we're, we're just going to keep rolling with the ideas here. Boom. Sheet is updated to view only if you didn't make it. Better luck next week. Root, root, root on your friends in the chat. Uh, but all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about Apple. Ticker AAPL. Um, let, here, here's the one-year chart of Apple that we have up on the screen now. Uh, you know, we, we, we see that that it's gotten a nice little bit of an uplift. I mean, the, the stock has been trading in, in sort of a sideways, sideways range for a little while. We, we had, a, had a melt up. We had a melt down. Now the stock is starting to get a little bit more momentum behind it as the S&P is back up at all-time highs. Um, th- this is one of the, the ones that I am in now. I, I get a lot of questions about thoughts on Apple, especially after it had been depressed in previous weeks. Uh, I, I do like this one right now. This is also a Tom Nash favorite. 
uh, you know, thesis that that we both have is is pretty similar, which is that we've seen the the triple Qs, the the Nasdaq and the S and P's running. Uh, Apple had not partaken in in any of that run really up until j- just a handful of days ago last week. Um, you know, I'm in the mode of I want to make my portfolio safer than less safe, and and for that reason, I've, I've chosen to to keep an eye on Apple. I haven't added to the position yet. Obviously, it would have been nice to last week, um, but again, that that you know safer stock story. The the valuation isn't crazy like a lot of these other names. The reason why I want to make the the portfolio a little bit more conservative is that as we're reaching these all time highs, we're we're seeing more volatility. The, the, the rotation game is on, right? We, we went through quite a period where, where you could buy anything and it would go, right? We, we saw that all in the second half of 2020. Uh, in 2021, it's definitely been people are picking favorite pockets, favorite sectors, and Apple is one of those stocks that had gotten left behind while the market continued to run. For that reason, I, I like Apple. If we see a correction, Apple's not going to get as hammered as much as a lot of these other tech stocks out there. So, so there are my thoughts on that one. I'm curious where Zinger Nation stands here on Apple. If you like the stock, throw the one. If not, throw the two. Um, you know, it is a favorite of mine. Well, you guys drop those answers in there. I'm going to make the same ass that I've already made like 19 times today. There's the lightning sound. We hadn't tried the lightning sound yet. Uh, but 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 while you drop those answers in there, same ask I've always made, which is like the stream. Share the stream. We want to get the community bigger. We want to get more ideas flowing. When we come back from, from we, we've got a guest coming up now. Uh, we're going to be talking NFTs. After that, we're going to be doing more trade ideas. We already have four on the board today. I'll recap them, ticker FTCV. If you're in the chat, help, help your fellow zingers out by, by typing the tickers in there. FTCV, ticker AHAC, ticker BTN. And then we just, just did a, a quick little hit on AAPL. Uh, I also gave you guys an update on two trades that I closed that we put on last week, tickers EBS and TRMB. So without further ado, I'm going to roll our special guest video and bring them on. Sure. There we go. We're loading. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. John, can you hear us? I, I see a nice little spinning animation. It isn't, uh, you know, a horrible and there we go. I see you. Can you hear me? Okay, we got we got the one second finger. That's fine. We don't hear you yet, John. Yep. Unfortunately, fortunately, no go on the audio thus far. All right. Well, while I, I can troubleshoot shoot you with you, John, uh, in the meanwhile, why don't we play your little ArcNet explainer video? It's just a couple minutes to get you guys an idea for this guest. All right. You, you have it up, producer Rohan. ArcNet is the next generation of social media and digital networks using the same augmented reality technology that made Pokemon go viral. Visit myarcnet.io. ArcNet users can create and visit interactive augmented reality arcs all around the world. Just wait until you see the possibilities. These augmented reality arcs are floating pictures and text visible in the physical world around you using the ArcNet app's AR viewer. By tapping the arc visible on your screen, this opens up that arc's page, which can contain everything from a social media profile to pictures, videos, links, coupons, items for sale, educational information, messaging, and more. Downloading ArcNet creates a smartphone device Arc floating over you which contains your social media profile and items of your choosing. Follow other Arcs or grow your own following. Imagine being at an ArcNet equipped zoo which has an Arc at each animal exhibit. These arcs can contain additional educational pictures and videos by zookeepers specific to the animals in front of you, including their names, age, and where they came from. Create or visit an arc over the gravestone of a loved one who has passed away. Friends and family from all over the world can forever celebrate their memory by visiting and uploading pictures, videos, and memories to that arc. Visit an ArcNet equipped shopping mall where every store can have an Arc outside their shop, containing reviews, coupons, pictures, links, now hiring, and more. 
ARCs placed at your home or business mailbox where neighbors can exchange messages and local municipalities could send notices and alerts to every resident in seconds for little cost. ARCnet users can visit or create ARCs outside or inside homes for sale, apartments for rent, parks, municipal buildings, billboard advertisements, networking events, attractions, and so much more. ARCnet users own all the ARCs that they create with verifiable ownership using blockchain technology. ARCnet users will have the ability to buy and sell their ARCs as well as monetize them using our KLK crypto tokens. ARCnet, the next generation of social media and digital networks. A Totacrom innovation of publicly traded ticker symbol TTCM, myarcnet.io. All right, so so there's the video, and and Dr. John, can we? Uh oh, producer Rohan, I don't have sound. He's on it. All right, wait. How how about now? Can we give it a go? Uh, can you hear me? There we go. All right, I I, I got the head, the thumbs up from producer Rohan when he gives me the thumbs up. He doesn't lead me astray, so we hear you loud and clear. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. Watching you guys work is a lot of fun. So uh, do good. I'll try to entertain you with uh, some of the most advanced stuff I know happening on planet Earth in our shop. So glad to be here. Awesome. And and, and so so we saw the video. We, we got an idea, an overview as, as to what the company does. You know, so, something that, that was interesting to me. Uh, and, and something that, that I see our, our chatters talking about are, are the patent side of things and specifically patents related to NFTs. Can, can you talk to us about that? Well, sure. I sure can. It, it turns out that um, an NFT, you guys know all about NFTs. You know, trade them, you think about them. Uh, we do too. Our patents uh, dealt with the concept of NFTs before the word NFT was a coined word. And so we have uh, the patents that really describe how do you create the NFT? How do you put it? Uh, what do you do? Uh, how do you create ownership? How do you guarantee ownership? How do you protect it? So that's what we do. Uh, our technology is called uh, Clixy technology. The app that you just saw, the uh, ArcNet app, is how we're uh, engaging people around the world in something that's platform-based, where an app can allow people to interact with each other through augmented reality, which really is the future of dealing with the internet. It won't be long before screens vanish and augmented reality replaces them. Right now you can do it with your phone, your smartphone. That's a good thing because there's just so much you can do that way. Uh, but it won't be long, just a matter of a couple of years, I think. That's a projected a projection. Or we'll be doing it with our glasses. If you wear glasses, you'll be looking at the world uh, augmented reality through your glasses. If you don't wear glasses, you'll buy some because it'll change what you do. Now, I don't see anything but me. Uh, is, I'm here. Should I'm I be here. seeing you? Okay, good. So I enjoy talking, but I'll let you talk or ask questions. Yeah. So, 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 so when you're saying that the next couple of years, right, is, is that you're, you're talking about the augmented reality there, or, or are you talking about the, the NFT patent side of things, getting some, some traction there, or, or what specifically uh, no, is it? It's aug augmented reality, uh, okay. where augmented reality lifts off the screen completely and becomes augmented in your environment around you. You can do that with a phone between you and the world, but that's not the same as looking at the world. So that's what we're looking at there. No, NFTs are uh, a, a modern rage phenomenon. Yep. They're not modern or ragey to us. We've been on top of this for a long time. Uh, we called it trusted imagery, trusted technology, uh, trusted files and folders. And so trustability is everything. When you sell something that's a digital image and don't have any way to prove that what you sold really owns that image, you've got a problem. So there's a lot of that going on with NFTs, but not with our stuff. We solved that problem some time back. Are we buying and selling NFTs? No, we're not. That's another man's thing. Right is, now, is there a way for you to apply that technology that you, you developed to that market? Because like you said, it's so hot right now. 
Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Uh, the main thing is when you have an NFT for sale, what is it? It's digital. Well, so somebody has a copy. Do they own it or do you own it? There's your question. And putting that all to bed is the name of the game. That's not a matter of a picture. That's a matter of an approach, a corporation. Well, that's a that's a big click there. I have a little click like over here. Anyway, so uh, that's that's what that is. Yes, so the sixty nine million dollar sale recently uh, of Winkleman stuff is an example of something that when it's sold, what did you? Is it bragging rights that you bought? Did you buy uh, uh, a digital file that someone also has an exact copy of? Is yours marked in such a way? Did you know the difference? Well, all those questions we resolve. But um, in what's being sold today on Ethereum, that's just the wild west of selling what you can. And uh, we're, we're quite a bit different. Our, our goal and our aim is to create a global a transaction market using our, the ArcNet platform that you just had that little clip for. That's our goal. And there will be NFTs as well as uh, fungible tokens, which are not non-fungible tokens. There are things like coins and currency. And really the difference between fungibility and non-fungibility is uh, can you treat it like a currency? Then it's fungible. But is it ownership uh, as opposed to a currency? Ownership of, let's say, a piece of property or some digital rights or even some digital imagery that can't be falsified. All of that has to do with non-fungible tokens. And the Internet is perfect. I, no, I should not say that. I should say the uh, uh, a well-structured uh, blockchain is perfect for preserving trading marketing, making money, having a, an economy based on uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Oh, okay, good. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I, I just got a note saying, please look into the camera so people can see your eyes. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was looking I was looking at you. There I'll look go. at the hey, camera. You, 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 <laughs> you got somebody back, back screen helping you out. I, I like it. Yeah. Um, and, and then, yeah. and then tell us, you know, what, what, what are the next things that we should be looking forward to for, from you guys? Um, I, I know you mentioned like, like two year, uh, augmented reality with glasses timeline, but, but what are, what are some of the next things that, that we should be on the lookout for? I think the very next thing is to see a globalization of our, um, a platform, what we call the ArcNet platform. So it's an app and it's a bunch of servers that support that app. And that's what we call the ArcNet platform. Uh, the biggest thing that I'd like to see in the next, gosh, six months or so, we're raising a ton of money uh, to get ArcNet where we want it. But um, the biggest thing I'd like to see is to have the ability for you or anybody else to cast, to place uh, an ArcNet, what we call Arc, which is a, di uh, a digital interface that you create, you make and you put someplace where people can see it, that you want to see it. If you're a store, it's your products. You want people to see your products. So you place that digital interface where your customers are. That's I just want to see that happen. Digital interfaces, geolocated, are tricky. We can place an arc digitally, lo digitally located, geolocated, down to a, a uh, an inch. But um, where are you if you're looking at it? If you don't know where you are, well, that's a problem. You're not going to see where the arc is because you don't know where you're looking. So solving that problem, which is right now in our plate, is our next big thing. And that will enable you and other people like you to make arcs, play with them, uh, to let people see them, to meet your friends by seeing their arcs in a stadium, all kinds of interesting things. An example, you and your friends show up at a football stadium. You don't know where they are, but you, you all have the ARC application. So you turn it on, you look around, and there's your buddies. One guy's in row 26 of section E, the other guy's in row 1 of section G, and uh, easy meetup. Find your car in a parking lot that's too big to find it. Other things where placing an arc has a tremendous value. But the real value is letting people uh, directly relate to their 
providers of digital, not digital, uh, goods and services of any kind, uh, any place in the world. That is the new interaction that we're striving to get into. It's a big market. It's a $54 trillion market just the consumer uh, uh, purchasing of goods and services for household stuff. It's a big market. It's about 60% of the whole global GDP. So connecting up with that is our whole goal. Will NFTs be part of that? Sure. Ownership really means NFTs. It doesn't mean fungible tokens. It means non-fungible tokens, which is ownership of property or rights. Um, sorry for all the conversation. I'd like you to ask more questions, but that's what's coming right away. Real accurate placement of, of um, arcs and then your ability to see them because we know where you are. Knowing where you are is a big deal. Our cell phones tell us more or less where we are. Mobile devices are great, but more or less is not nearly good enough. So we're solving that problem. But the big thing, uh, AR glasses, augmented reality glasses, that's other people's jobs. That's Apple, that's Google, yep. uh, that's and you work on the software side of it, correct? We're the software side. We want to solve that problem of interaction between us and providers. And, uh, and then when the digital glasses come on board, we'll transport right in seamlessly. But in the meantime, our smartphones do a great job. It's just not perfect. It's not getting uh, your, your internet off the screen in front of you. It's getting your internet in a smartphone between you and the world around you. It's a step, but the whole step is AR glasses. So that's what to look forward to. But right now, awesome. our stock is... Um, TTCM, you can follow it, or an over-the-counter penny stock, and a penny is a really good price when we anticipate being at many, many dollars. So uh, yeah, I hear you giving stock tips. Best stock tip I can give is buy us. We're good. We're going a, a long, long ways. Hop on the train and enjoy it. Awesome. Well, John, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us today. You sort of gave us a, a look, a preview into the future of the world. So, so thank you so much for, for coming and hanging out. And we definitely have some fans of the company in the chat. Well, great. Hi, fans. There you go. Awesome. All right, John. Th th thanks a lot. And, and keep us posted with updates. INR. You bet. You bet. Pleasure. All right. All right, guys. There was an interesting one. I bet that's one that, that not a ton of folks are, are aware of. Um, the, the augmented reality thing, de definitely interesting. Um, we really haven't talked about augmented reality a, a ton on this show either. Um, so, so we'll, we'll have to, to check it out. Uh, I see some people in the chat. What, one of them's asking about the, the chat challenge. Yes. It's view only. If you did not get your answer in there yet, I'm sorry. It, it's view only. Maybe if you drop it in the chat, we'll, we'll be able to work it in there for you but a little bit of a preview of what is to come today. If you're just joining us, Mr. Raznick is back on the show. Yep. Yep. <gasps> Whoa, that There's was a, a bad noise. I'm testing them all out, okay? I still have a lot of new ones. Let's try this one. All right, I'm going to play that, that one whenever you come in. Boom. That, one, that one's intruder bad. Alert. You, you like, oh, intruder alert that you're calling me? That, that's what it's called. That's not nice, if you ask me. You want to be mean? So, sometimes it I mean, makes that, me feel better by putting others down. I'm trying to I'm trying to hijack your soundboard right now, but I forgot the app that I have for it, and I was gonna mess you up right now, but I can't freaking find it. Oh my god, why can't I find it? All right, forget it. I won't do it. It's a waste of my time to look for it when I don't know where it is. That's yep. the bottom line. All right, so. I feel like it's like a, a little bit of a calm day in the market, a little, maybe on the boring side a little bit. Yeah, I mean, let's see. We, we have spies up 0.06%. Not much action. Yeah, and, and, and what I, well, I mean, you can go, Luke, but I do have to say, we may say boring, but Tesla over 700. Woo! 
And and, and I, I, so I take heard that, a rumor. Take that, Joel Conan. Gordon Johnson. When is when is Spencer Israel's friend Gordon Johnson coming on? Well, well, I, I heard a rumor. I'm just looking at at the show notes now with producer AB. And he said that uh, our, our 130 guest re- recently called out Elon Musk on something. So you have to ask him about that. Really? Yeah, that's what he yeah. said. Well, don't look now, but I will tell you that BTN is now 10% over. Yeah, I mean, and Tesla's up 3.6%. I'm a little sad that I sold 10 shares at 600 because that would be 10 times 100, $1,000. Boom, my, my call option. A lot of lunches. Have, my, my call option, the 675 call is... is in the money again i was down on that one um oh. so voyager all right, all right Luke, you have to go I'm you pass it to you, you, you yep, i gotta go back to building gonna, yep. gonna go work oh, on da- uh, da- one of our big brokerages actually dash. two of our big brokerages the next 30 minutes dash is two big brokerages all right do you need anyone do you, over do you need Good anyone luck, to, do you need anyone to send the emails to the brokerages or anything to get some uh track jackets oh we might need some track jackets we have any listeners in canada Okay, so send a bro uh, email to t- to TD Bank that you want your Benzinga news. It's like your MTV that you want your Benzinga news. Send it to TD Bank. Say we want Benzinga news. Send it. Send a screenshot to powerhour at benzinga dot com. Include your address, and we will send you track jackets with your size. Okay, so send it to TD Bank. We want our Benzinga news, and we will send you that stuff ASAP. Um, I don't know. Aaron Thomas sent something like four weeks ago, and they still haven't gotten it. So I, I'm going to have to put a, a tracking beacon in this in these things. But go to TD Bank and say, we want our Benzinga news. Please give us Benzinga news. Please, please, please. And uh, here we go. Okay? And then send a screenshot to PowerHour at Benzinga.com. And then once you do that, um, we will get you those track jackets. We need an address. Your name and size, if you wish to opine. Okay, and offer your advice. All right, so do you want me to open my account? It's a little quiet of a day, but I think it's time to maybe open the account and let you guys go through it and see what we're doing here today. All right, let's go. This is not, again, this is just one account. It's not my main account that I use but it's one that I trade with a little more often, okay? So let me just share it, um, give it some fun, give us some likes. We're at, like, I don't know, probably 100 likes. So get us to 150. I'm gonna share it with numbers. Luke, why are you still hanging out there? I thought you are done. thought you have other work to do. What's he doing? Is he working from a stand-up desk? I don't know. He's like, he's like still in my business here. I don't know if he could hear me. He's not responding, so maybe he can. can't. Oh, there everything. he is. So what do you, <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Um, I hope we can't hear everything. TD Ameritrade, yeah, they have their Benzinga news. But here we go. Um, who do you want to email specifically at TD Bank? I don't know. Go to LinkedIn, head of product. Go to their customer service. Hit like four addresses. Pretend that you were the CEO of Benzinga. And what would you do? What would you do? Who would you reach out to? All right. So I'm just going to show some positions. Here we go. So here's my Tesla one. I own Tesla in another account too, but here's the kind of stuff that I'm playing right now. Is it too small? All right, I'll make it bigger. One sec. Thank you for the feedback, uh, Dominix. Um, where is, uh, oh yeah, Sylvia, thank you. Thank you for the feedback, Sylvia. Uh, very kind of you, I appreciate it. Okay, um, yeah, we're, we're not on just YouTube. I got some Twitch people going. If you're on Twitch, I'm on Twitch. My name is Jason Rasnick. I'm your local DJ here to pump out the jams, pump up the jams, pump up the jams. Eh, eh, eh. I can't play the song so we don't want any copyright violation. You know, YouTube's a stickler for that. Oh, we have a guest coming on uh, in a little bit, I see. So, um, all right, so here's what we got for this account right now. Um, so BTN, as you guys know, I'm, I'm not selling Voyager. Yeah, that one's crazy. Um, but I own it mostly in another account, so it doesn't matter for this one. GBTC, I've owned for a long time. I mean, that if we look at the percentage, let's look at percentage. Let's do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. So let's do that. Percentage gain. Total gain. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, Del Taco, which I, I guess I still have some. I, I told you as I trimmed it all, but I guess I still have a little Del Taco. I did not know that. 
So here we go. It's a small amount. But so those are the, the gainers. Terra Send has just been stuck in this 9 to 10 range for the last, um, you know, the last whatever. Um, I've sold a lot of my Tesla. I mean, I had call options, but I mean, I had double the position in this account. I had about 1,200 shares at one point. Um, Zoom Holdings, I've sold a lot of Zoom. And I've sold a lot of TerraSend, to be honest. Just, you know, Voyager, sold a ton of Voyager. I had, I mean, I have it in another account. In another account, I have um, like 10, I have a ton of Voyager. Voyager's my biggest position. Um, Wendy's, I've owned that for a while. I bought it during Corona days. About a thousand shares when I bought it, and then I trimmed some when I was like I was annoyed that I was on too much margin. Um, Cure Leaf, it's a cannabis play for me. TAP, I have the fifty dollar calls. I think we're going to see this this call, the, you know, go up. It's up fifty seven percent, but I think we'll be up about a hundred percent, two hundred percent before it's over, maybe more. Um, you know, and so um, so yeah, we're not on Schwab yet. So send an email JP to Schwab. And you'll, we'll do the same thing for you. So we'll let you know on that one. Um, STK, STKS. I t told you guys all when I bought those shares. I bought those shares live on the show. I originally started buying STKS either at four ninety seven or five dollars, I think. Um, but then, um, you know, we uh, I bought more as the stock went up. Save is at thirty five. So save has been stuck between this thirty four thirty eight range. So I don't know what you guys want to do here. I'm hanging on to it. I'm not selling. I'm keeping what I've left. I've sold um, a bunch at 38, but I hold on to it. This QRTEA, I just love because the dividend. I love it. I mean, it's just a safe play. Um, CRHARA, I have no idea what that is. Um, isn't it great when you don't know what a stock is and it's in your portfolio? Not smart. Um, what else do we got? Anyone else? Uh, BTN, as you guys know, up 30 cents today. No brainer. Uh, Leslie's. Uh, let's see what else we have a guess in a minute. So Penn national. All right. So Penn national guys, you remember I bought it the day of the thing and I waited to buy tools on the show. So we're getting hit when I mean, we are up, but we're getting hit on Penn. So we need a little, we, we, we need a uh, positive news on that. Um, that's it. I guess that's it. Je I mean, I don't jet blue BCRX. Um, Gan, I, I used to own a ton again. It's at 19 again. See, and I told people that had GAN when it went back up to like near 30, I said, trim, trim, trim. And I, was, I had 2000 shares. And so my brother and dad, they didn't listen to me. They just, they just kept it. I trimmed out. I don't know. In hindsight, I mean, it could be a $30 stock again. It could be a $40 stock, to be honest. I just, I didn't like that a couple of the partnerships deals in Detroit, they're not powering. I mean, maybe things will change, but I didn't like that they weren't. And so that's why I sold some. They have two deals in Detroit. Um, and that's all I got. All right. So that's my account. It's enough on the account side. Let's go. We're gonna have a guest on in a second. Uh I don't know. Someone just clicked a button on my thing. Uh, hey, Jesse, how you doing? Good, Jason. How you doing? Good, good. How's life? And where are you at? I am here in uh, Bend, Oregon. Uh, really? Yeah, I've been here. I've moved here about a little over 20 years ago when it was kind of a, a nothing town. It's still kind of off a lot of people's radar for, you know, I guess that's a good thing. But yeah, it's, it's grown like crazy. We've been one of these real estate markets that's gone nuts over the last 12 months or so. Yeah. So, oh, oh, really? So a lot of people are moving there? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of people are looking for, you know, better quality of life, all that stuff, right? People moving out of the, you know, bigger cities and, and the moving to places like Bend. Um, we're basically right on, I hate to, to kind of, uh, to, to uh, promote it, you know, but we live on the, we're on the other side of the Cascades. So we're kind of in the rain shadow. I like to think of it as like a, a, a small Denver. We got about a hundred thousand population here, right in the middle of the state and it's high desert. So it's, Pretty good climate, um, you know. Year round, we get snow in the wintertime. We got Mount Bachelor for skiing and golf in the summertime. Uh, yeah, so it's it's, it's, a, it's a nice place to live. Yeah, yeah. Um, so before you came on, and when I was doing my portfolio review, your your image looks like in the bottom corner a very small image. You know how you see it in the in the back end studio thing. 
Yeah. And I couldn't tell if what you were wearing was a, a Jewish talus. Like it looked like <laughs> I, I, I this, is a, this is a sweater my daughter got me at a, a thrift store for my I think for my birthday a year ago. And uh, yeah, I just uh, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, from the 70s or something. It has actually belt loops on it, but there's no no belt. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. So yeah, Spencer Israel said the same thing to me. Um, that's so funny. Okay. So how is the market treating you? Good, good. I think, uh, I don't know when was the last time we talked. It was back in early February, I think. And, um, we were talking about, uh, you know, I was, I was still kind of bullish, uh, energy back then, but you know, it's had such a good run and it's been starting to give back some of those gains, but I think also the main thing we were talking about then was, uh, you know, starting to short some of these, um, you know, the stay at home stocks. We talked about, I think, Peloton and Zoom and and, and those types of things. And, uh, you know, that trade, I think, has worked, you know, pretty well over the, the past couple of months. So, um, yeah, I'm still looking for those those types of opportunities, uh, you know, things that are cheap to buy on the, the long side. I'm kind of a value investor by nature and uh, looking for things to kind of, I like to be long short most of the time too. So, you know, finding things to, to short, uh, to just kind of stay hedged. So are you, do you keep long-term shorts on? And if you do, what kind of shorts do you do? I, you know, I don't think you can't, I don't, I don't long-term short it. To me, you have to, you have to trade from the short side. I don't think you can put on, uh, you know, a short and just think of it as a long term, you know, even a six month, two year, three year time frame. If it's not working, I think you have to get out immediately. I think you have to have, a, uh, you know, a real scalper trader mentality for, you know, try and trade on the short side. So, no, I, I think for me, you know, I, I will try and short things. And if they don't work, I'll get right out. And, uh, you know, I've been focused more probably on small caps over the last month, kind of targeting, you know, short sales there, even in the, you know, IWM, just because I think, <clears throat> you know, a lot of these, uh, the valuations are absolutely nuts in small caps. They're twice as expensive as they've ever been in history. And, you know, a lot of that, I think, is just, you know, uh, uh, related to the, you know, the mania, I think, in, in stocks that we've seen over the past 12 months with a lot of retail just pouring into a lot of these names and pushing the valuations to the moon. So, uh, you know, to me, I've, yeah, I've been focused on small caps from on, on the short side. Got it. Okay. All right. And when you say small, uh, small caps on the short side, it, I see, I'd be so nervous because can't, the, when they're small caps, can't they do well until they don't in the terms of like, they can put out news, they can say, Hey, we're thinking NFT. We could, you know what I mean? Jesse, like, isn't yeah, that and that's why, you know, mostly I focus on IWM, you know, on the, on the okay. ETF itself. So, cause you have that single stock risk of being short to me, you know, it was amazing to watch GameStop, you know, back in January, just destroy Melvin capital. I've seen so many of my friends, you know, manage hedge funds, you know, literally have one stock blow up their fund and, that, that's why I have the attitude towards shorting that I have, which is, you know, you, you put on a short and you have, to, you have to send out kind of like trial balloons and you maybe put on a position. If it starts working, you can kind of pyramid that. But, uh, you know, you have to be extremely careful. And I think you got to get out right away as soon as it stops working um, and be very, you know, very active on the on the trading side of it. So got it. Got it. How long have you been doing the Thelda report for? Um, I started it as a blog back in 2005. Uh, and that was when I was living here in Bend. And, uh, you know, I'd been here for five years and I was watching the real estate market go berserk. Bend in 2005, six was the number one or two most overvalued real estate market in the country during kind of the peak of the housing bubble. And so, you know, I'd go to barbecues and, you know, you literally couldn't talk to anybody. Um, nobody wanted to talk about anything but real estate and how much equity they're pulling out to leverage into three, four, five spec homes. And it was just, you know, coming from the dot com mania just a few years earlier, it was like deja vu, um, you know, watching kind of what was going. So I started the blog in 2005 kind of to just chronicle the, 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 uh, the housing housing bubble. Got it. Got it. Do you think you are most of your like, did you your, are you most of your Twitter followers from like the early like 2010 to 2013 or is your Twitter following still growing pretty rapidly? And by the way, his Twitter 
feed is uh, Jesse Felder or feel whatever you want to pronounce it. J E S S E F E L D E R. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's actually just been growing pretty steadily. I think I use the Twitter account mainly. I, I try and track. Um, I do a lot of reading and I track narratives and you know, how these popular narratives are kind of developing and because I do think they do drive prices in the short run. And so to kind of track those narratives, I, I just tweet a lot of what I'm reading, charts um, and stories. And I think, you know, obviously people find some kind of value in that. And, and even whether they, you know, uh, actually tracking the same narratives I am or, you know, or, or what have you. So, yep. Got it. And, yeah, you, um, you know, I, I, speaking of your Twitter, I see one of your tweets uh, on Elon Musk from an article, uh, The Current, um, about, um, I don't know where it is. I had it up on the screen, but uh, did you read that article in uh, The uh, the Current thing? Your, it says, report here, here's your tweet. I got it now. Um, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'll link it in. We're, we're, uh, her, Aaron Bree, link it in. Re reports describe what is politely labeled a high level of degenerate behavior and which one person in Musk Circle describes as a total and complete pathological psychopathy. So um, what's your take on this, this article from currentaffairs.org? Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at just kind of market history, we have these people that are lionized by the media and eventually that, you know, sentiment changes. I mean, it's pretty, pretty good contrarian indicator whenever you've seen whatever it is, the next Warren Buffett, um, you know, sentiment gets extremely positive towards people who, you know, and that, that's, you know, as my friend Helene Meisler would say, price, you know, uh, you know, uh, price is essentially uh, creates sentiment. And so, you know, Tesla stock price has done unbelievably well over the past year and a half. And, uh, you know, Elon's image has been, you know, burnished to a large degree, you know, simply by, uh, you know, what the stock price has done, I, you know, I would monitor that narrative that if, if sentiment towards Elon is starting to shift, you know, that, that would be an important signpost in, in uh, kind of where we are in that, in that uh, Tesla sentiment cycle. Okay. Got it. Got it. And so do you take shorts on it or do you go long it or how do you look at it? Well, so yeah, I've I've traded it from the short side in the past. I don't own it right now, and I'm not short it right now. But uh, I will say the last time we talked, when I was talking about Peloton and things, I was shorting, um, you know, Kathy Wood's you know main ETF, yep. ARKK. In order to be short that thing, you have to be bearish on Tesla because it is the largest position. And so, um, you know, I, I think to me, shorting ARKK was a really good way to play that. Um, shorting that stay-at-home trade that we were talking about last time in early February because the thing is so heavily into a lot of the stocks that benefited from the lockdowns. And so, uh, you know, whether it's Zoom and Peloton, um, Roku is another one. And a lot of these stocks I was looking at individually and thinking, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trading these things from the short side individually. You know, it might, might as well just trade ARKK from the short side. So, yeah, that's probably where I prefer to focus in order to avoid, you know, the single stock risk. Got, got it. So that, and so are you short it now, ARKK? I'm not, I'm not, but I'm looking, like I said, I've kind of migrated from that towards small caps over just in the last month or so. Got it. So are there like any small caps that you want to call out right now? Not, not individually, but I would say that, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, the biggest holdings there, GameStop is incredibly overvalued. But obviously, you know, looking at what happened to Melvin Capital, you don't want to short that stock individually, but it's one of the biggest stocks in IWM. Another one would be Plug Power, which I think, you know, Plug Power is ridiculously overvalued. I don't want to short it individually. But, the, you know, to me, uh, you know, Plug Power was a stock back when I was <clears throat> head trader at um, the hedge fund I co-founded back in the late 90s, where my partner kind of bought into the very, very much like Stan Druckenmiller did at the peak of the dot-com mania, he started buying into, we were a value shop, started buying into a lot of these mania-focused names, and Plug was was one of those. Plug, <clears throat> it was amazing to watch the stock go down 98% plus in the in the aftermath, in the wake of the dot-com bust. Um, 
the valuation today is even more obscene than it was back then. And so I, I do think plug is one that has uh, a great deal of risk in the shares. Um, it's already come back a fair amount, but um, you know, it could only be the beginning of a much bigger decline. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I don't know how plug power will swim, swim into that valuation. I mean, there I'm seeing so many competitors in that space too coming out with arguably, well, I guess, I mean, you don't know, but arguably better technology. I mean, when you're the second mover, third mover, you can sometimes cheat off the others and arguably have better technology. So I hear what you're saying on plug. Yeah. Uh, the only other point that I would make from a macro standpoint, too, is one of the, the most important things I look at and have for my whole career is insider buying and selling. Um, a lot of people believe that, you know, insider buying can be, you know, predictive. But uh, Nejat Sehun, who's a, a professor of finance, University of Michigan Business School, has done some incredible research on, on just quantitatively understanding insider buying and selling. And he shows that not only is buying predictive, but selling is also, and not just in individual stocks, but also in aggregate. If you look at the 12 month totals of buying and selling as a ratio, um, that's pretty, pretty uh, predictive of forward returns in the stock market and in the economy. And over the last 12 months, we've seen the sell, the sell to buy ratio just scream higher, which to me is, is kind of a, a red flag for the broader market and even for the economy on a you know one to two year time frame. And what was the University of Michigan um, business school? Um, his name is Najat Sehun and he wrote a, I, I can't remember Nijat, the name. I think it's Nijat. Intelligent Investing um, with Insiders or something like that. It's the name of his book. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's the man when it comes to research around insider buying and selling. Yeah. I went to the Ross school of business and we're right here in, uh, Detroit. So I should get, I should get him on the show. I would um, love to see it. I would, I mean, the jets, I just have to figure out how to spell his name, but we're making pro I'm making progress. N E J A T S E Y H U N. Whoa, my God. You, uh, you, oh my God. How do you know all that so fast? Wow. <laughs> because I'm a big fan of his work. So, okay. So, Najet, N E J A T, and then what was the last name? S E Y H U N. S E Y. All right. Thank you. God. Okay. Yeah. You got to get this guy on. Yeah. Okay. I'd be curious to know his opinion about it. I think he's been quoted in a couple of, you know, Barron's articles in the last few months, kind of pointing this out that yes, the sell to buy ratio is off the charts right now. And typically that's pretty predictive of, of uh, below average stock market returns over the next you know year or so. Okay. Yeah. So that's, so that's interesting. That's, that's an interesting take. I'm definitely going to reach out and have him on and say you recommended him because that is, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that sell to buy ratio is so much higher. That is a powerful stat for sure. Yeah. Because and for people who want to track this stuff, my friend Asif Surya does a free, has a free blog, insidearbitrage.com. And he puts up like the five uh, bet, you know, most interesting insider buys and insider sells every week. Yeah. Um, and he puts up the total selling and buying for that previous week also. So a lot of the data I use comes from from uh, Asif's uh, website. Yeah. Yeah, I get his like new his newsletter. He didn't yeah. used to, he didn't used to have a website. I swear, I fear it was like just a newsletter at one point, or was it always a website? It's been a website for at least uh, the last few years. But yeah, I think I've been getting emails from him. You yeah. know, he's another yeah. Oregon guy. So yeah, yeah, um, I get I get him every every Sunday night, and I and then last night I for some reason went to the website. I didn't know he had all the you know I didn't know he had the whole website thing, but it, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Um, so, all right. And so um, do you think the market, I mean, yes, it was crazy about, I mean, everyone's talking about it. You think it's cooled down for a bit in terms of like velocity of people talking about it? Like what's going to happen? Do you think people are going to leave the market? What, what, like I just, I don't know. I, what, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think all those, those indicators, whether it's, I mean, one of the indicators I look at is NASDAQ volume relative to NYSE volume. And we've seen that, you know, that surge to record highs over the last, you know, few months. But that's started to reverse and, you know, lower significantly. And then you can also look at whatever it is, call option volumes. And that, you know, peaked back in February, something like that has been rolling over. So all those signs point to, you know, that kind of uh, speculative interest in the market is, is definitely waning. Got it. Yeah, that's and but then again, the thing that I think about is like you can't predict 
the future, right? Like we didn't know a GameStop thing would happen. We didn't know. I mean, there could be another, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the thing is that then draws the craziness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're seeing, you know, there's a lot of the, the, craziness in the market has maybe migrated out of, you know, call options and into crypto over right. the last, you know, few months, potentially, I, you know, it's, it's really hard to keep track. And like you said, you can't predict it, but then again, you know, it's the GameStop thing was mind boggling to me that, you know, short interest was over hundred percent. I was buying Bed Bath & Beyond a year ago because the short interest was 70, 80% of the float and the stock was incredibly cheap, four or five bucks a share, something like this. When, you know, uh, and, you know, Bed Bath kind of benefited by this, the same, you know, kind of GameStop mania where the short squeeze just went berserk. And I think Melvin was probably caught short uh, Bed Bath just like it was GameStop. Um, and so, yeah, just because we didn't know GameStop was going to go up infinity, you know, you could pretty much see the writing on the wall in terms of how the short interest is so massive. And I think a lot more people are starting to pay attention to that now that weren't paying attention to it before, but I, you know, I, I was kind of writing about Bed Bath. You know, when you get 70, 80% of the float sold short, it doesn't take very much to create a massive short squeeze in the shares. Yeah, t totally. Now you do a lot of writing. Do you do a lot of video stuff too? I don't, I don't do any video stuff. Um, okay, so, do, we're, so we're the lucky ones. Yeah, I do, uh, I do a podcast um, okay. and that's basically when I have a topic you know, that uh, that I, I'm really interested in focusing on. I try and find somebody who's really, you know, dialed into that. So, you know, back last October when I was really kind of pounding the table bullish on energy, I had invited Lee Gehring onto my podcast, who's, you know, an amazingly talented, brilliant resource uh, investor in that space. And so that's kind of, yeah, what I use the podcast for is to try and highlight the work of people who I think are doing really cool things and, and, probably it's it's pretty hopefully it's pretty timely too yeah and what i was getting at is like um you don't do much video so next time we have you on you should like tweet your users you're going to be live in video for the first time because like <laughs> it, like people don't it's good to sometimes get the face personality behind i mean i guess you get the personality in the writing for sure if you're allowed to write that way um but um and you are at your own blog so yeah just the video video helps get you know when we started doing video it was like a it was like a world changing thing that like people started knowing my personality and like they treat Benzinga differently now. And it's like a whole thing, which is, which is great. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have 130,000 Twitter followers. So yeah. Lot. It's, I mean, it's a good point. I think, I think video does allow you to kind of, um, you know, and even beyond just the audio, I ask people, everybody see my cool seventies sweater. My daughter bought me. <laughs> exactly. I thought you said she knitted it for you or she bought no, it. No, no, she bought it at a, at a thrift store. Okay. Oh, yeah, you said that. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, and the reason I even set up the video thing is I went to your Twitter page and you didn't tweet that you're coming on. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that, like, I bet you there would be, you know, people who haven't seen you on video would enjoy that. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely. That, that was my, my yeah, yeah. mistake for not, or, not putting that out there. I, or, I try not to... Uh, do over promote. I can't stand people on Twitter to over promote. And so I try, I try to under promote. No. Yeah. Or, or, or it was our mistake for us not um, sending you a message regarding, you know, to tweet it out there or what have you. So yeah. That's yeah. E e either one, either one. So, um, all right. Anything else we missed should talk about anything like that? The only other thing I'm really paying uh, close attention to right now is the gold price. I'm getting really, I've been getting really bullish on gold again over the last month or so. I think we've seen, to me, you know, gold is driven by real rates and that's essentially nominal rates, less core CPI. So I look at the 30 year yield, less core CPI. Uh, core CPI has been falling and nominal rates have been going up. And so that means real yields have been going up, which is a headwind for the gold price. Not good. That's why gold's been correcting for six months or longer. Um, but now I do think, you know, not, nominal yields have gone up uh, a fair amount. And I think we're going to start to see with tomorrow's CPI report, we're going to start to see inflation really taking off and probably, I mean, almost certainly outpacing the rise in nominal yields going forward. So if inflation's rising faster than nominal yields, that means real rates are coming back down again. And that means that that headwind of rising real yields is shifting into a tailwind for the gold price. 
And to me, that's that's very bullish. Um, and especially at a time when we've seen massive outflows coming out of GLD and the other gold ETFs, um, sentiment has become really depressed. People are people don't want to own gold anymore. They want to own crypto instead. But I do think, like I said, the fundamentals for gold are shifting very positively over the next few months. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, totally. Now, what, what, one more thing, another commodity, wood. Wood has gone up. Lumber. Lumber has gone up prices. Are there any trades up for that? I, you know, I'm not looking at any trades. I, I would look at the lumber to gold ratio, um, I think, is, is uh, you know, there's, uh, who is it? Charlie Bellello um, and his former research partner, I think, have done some interesting research there. With you. When lumber to gold ratio rolls over, um, that could be a good indicator for risk assets more broadly. So for the stock market. So right now, lumber to gold has been just powering higher um, with lumber outpacing the gold price. Um, and that's been, you know, kind of a, a good you know, indicator to, to stay focused on the long side. But if that starts to shift and lumber prices start to come back and gold starts rallying, that could be a good signal, a bearish signal for, for equities. Yeah, got it. Okay. No, that's good. That's another good one to look at. All right. So you're a, a big macro guy too, looking at everything. So um, we, Jesse, we appreciate you coming on guys. Check out Jesse Felder at Jesse Felder uh, on Twitter, twitter.com slash Jesse Felder. And then he has his blog, which you'll click from there. And um, yeah, any, yeah. And we got everything else. Um, we're his only video um, outlet. That's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, the the FelderReport.com. The, you guys can spell that Felder, F E L D E R, report.com. And then he has a podcast too. So, you know, you are out there with audio. The last podcast is on March 10, 2021. All right. The Speculative Mania and Green Energy Stocks. So that's uh, Speculative Mania. Well, with Biden out there, he's putting a lot of money into uh, green energy. So we'll see. Well, and if you think from a macro standpoint, the more money that goes into a sector, the lower the returns get. And so, you know, you think about energy money coming out of the I mean, think about, yeah, what, what made the oil price crash in 2014? Low interest rates coming out of the financial crisis meant there was a lot of cheap capital for the energy sector. They drilled all the fracking wells and all of that supply created a crash in the oil price. I think that's probably the same thing we're looking at with green energy. The more money that goes into a sector, the more supply you get and the lower prices go as a result. So, and returns obviously with it. So to me, that's not necessarily, it's a good thing in the short run, it's bearish longer term. Got it. So you're basically saying it's not a bonanza, like it's not gonna move those stocks up 50% because maybe in the short term it could, but in the longer term, all that extra money makes it like false, you know, marketplace uh, dynamics and then more companies come, more competition, less margins, and then you're all screwed. Absolutely. <laughs> Good I, way to fr frame it. Yeah, sorry. I know you went, uh, that's my framing, but yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, no, that, that's, uh, yeah. no, I didn't think of it that way. So uh, short term, the long term, I get it. That, that's smart. Yeah. All right. Um, but, it, but, but the person that in the chat says, isn't demand always going to go up in energy? Well, I mean, demand for uh, which kind of energy? I mean, obviously, a lot of people say demand for traditional energy is going to go down, um, you know, but that obviously got that the outlook for demand was got way too bearish for energy stocks back in the fall. So you need to look at, OK, what is the sentiment? I mean, it's always sentiment, right? It comes back to what is the sentiment towards demand? If sentiment, if everybody believes demand is going to fall off a cliff and it doesn't, that's bullish. And obviously, if everybody believes demand is going to be, um, you know, incredible and it doesn't quite meet that, that's that's bearish. So I think, you know, it's always what is demand relative to expectations. And, and to me, I do think the expectations towards these green demand in, in the green energy sector broadly and EVs maybe specifically is probably expectations are way too, way too high. OK, that's part of it, too. All right. No, I got you. All right, Jesse. Thank, thank you for coming on the Power Hour. We appreciate it. Don't be a stranger. Every day, 12 to 2. Thank you, Jesse Felder. Yep. And Thanks, Jason. Again. So, yep, have a good time appreciate in Oregon. It. Love the sweater. Tell your tell your daughter. Love it. All Will right. do. Yep, talk to you later, man. Thank All you. Right. All right, guys, that was Jesse Felder. The guy is a hedge fund manager. He's good returns. He takes di differing views and great macro thoughts. I like this uh, thing on the green energy space. Uh, um, with all the extra money coming to the market. So 
Um, I do like that. That was uh, very helpful for me to understand. Um, yes, so that this thing here, let me let me do it for you. I um, we should have pulled it up earlier. Um, whoever you know wants to be on the board of it, we're gonna have an invite. Um, we're gonna have advisors on this page that you can take. You're gonna see your face on there. If you want to be the managing director of feedback and all this on this page, that I'm gonna show you right now. Um, so let me hit the share screen real quick. I got two, three minutes. So this is Benzinga Insider Trade. So if you go to benzinga.com slash SEC slash insider dash trades, this is this uh, um, new page. And if you want, you can hit this little menu bar. Allows you to change to alternate colors if you want or gradients, um, columns. You can just do the one thing or solid like that. If you want to do a filter, you can, uh, it's supposed to auto fill the min size, but if you want to just see people that have bought or sold a million dollars of their shares, which um, there you go. So now here are trade sizes of a million dollars or more. Um, so this guy right here sold a million dollars, 10% owner. So then I'd go, I would do more research. I'm like, okay, if this guy's selling a million dollars worth, is this is an option trade? And uh, let's look at the dates we got. Uh, April 7th, April 9th. So I see the, uh, this Jason Rhodes and I see a sell. Okay, I want to know more. So then what do I do? I hit the plus sign here and I look. Okay, here it is. The filing was he disposed of this many shares at 28. Okay, so then I see the sell. And then I want to make it easier. I just click view original filing. That's not the original filing. So there's something wrong there. Let's talk to our guy. But um, I don't know why that's the XML file. Something's wrong there. But 98% of the time you go to the actual file. I'll keep that open so I can show our guy that, but I don't want to take time from you guys. There's a light and dark mode if you if you want to do that. Um, but what I was looking for, and then there's preset, it, it, there's preset um, trade ideas here. So you can go latest, you know, multiple insider buys, so in clusters, you know, and have the most recent, but you're going to see more with that. We're going to do a show on the page at 1230 um, and a lot more to come with that. We looked around the web and we saw what pages you guys were liking. We built this thing. Uh, again, it's we're going to change the name to this like Benzinga.com slash insider. But for right now, please check it out at Benzinga.com slash SEC slash insider dash trades. If you take a look and you have some feedback, send an email to powerhour at Benzinga.com. And two people at random will be selected to win a Benzinga track jacket. So we worked pretty hard on this and there's a lot more to come with it. This is the first phase. You're going to have scores about like accuracy. Um, I'm going to reach out to the professor. Um, and there's a lot more tools behind it. My weight. Okay. So now let's go. Do we have the music set up for my weight? I don't know. Let's go to the, the weight thing. So we do not have the music set up for my weight. There is a scale here, but Rohan didn't have me like get on the scale of this. So we don't have that. Let me see if there's any news for the the weight, I don't see it. Okay. Um, and remember we have this uh, um, clean energy event. That's not the clean energy is This event we need. So go to bzsmallcap.com to check the sign up for it. bzsmallcap.com. Uh, bzsmallcap.com. Yeah, thanks for the uh, feedback on the insider page. We worked hard on it. We have a lot more. What, you know, you'll soon see. Do you guys like 13 Fs? You want to know what hedge funds own this thing? We want to make this as easy as possible for you to see the best possible page. You want to be able to turn on alerts for when they make the trades. You'll have that. You want to have a like just search this kind of thing, um, like how much shares they bought or sold. You'll have that. So we want to make the page as easy as possible. We and and sometimes we weren't sure on what was best. So what we did is we gave you the options. Mode one, mode two, mode three. See, there you go. I like mode two. So because I like mode two, it's a default option. So we're building you guys tool, tools. Uh, anyone else find a link that does not work? Please let Benzinga know. Yes, Tony. Please let Benzinga know. We really need your help. If there's not a link, send a, if it doesn't work. Power hour at Benzinga.com. I don't know why this original filing did not work here. And, but we, this thing is really, really strong. And um, 
I've been using it for trades for trading ideas. And um, oh, okay, so I know what it is. I know what it is. Why it's not working? It's just how we switch the process. We'll just have to make one quick change, and then you can have the history of the person's. So if you go to the guy's name, Douglas Kerr, then you're gonna build. You'll be able to go to a history of all the trades that the person's made. You'll see a profile page that'll be up in a um, in two days. the The link for it again is I'll put I'll paste it in the chat. I thought Aaron Bree did that, but um, he didn't. So I will do it right now. Uh, send us an email at powerhour at benzinga.com with your feedback, your name in town. And if you cho choose to opine and then we will send you, we'll pick two random people, uh, to, for some swag, uh, play around with it, beat it down. Tell me what doesn't work. I don't know if the, t I don't know if the autofill works yet. When you type a, a company name in, let me see. Nope. It doesn't the autofill the company name. We'll get that going too. So there's a couple things. Uh, do we guys need to, yes, Mateo, we need QA software. Are you, if you're really good at it and you could work our hours or you work like this time zone, yes, there is a job for you. And the way we would test it, I don't even care about a resume. The way we would test it is you would go into Benzinga pro and write some QA stuff and put it into the thing. And then that way, um, and then that way it will, um, you know, then that way that'll be a test to see if they like you or whatever. All right. You, yo, yeah. I redirected homepage, LOL. Um, what do you mean you got redirected the homepage? I don't know what you're talking about. A small cap conference. Will that be another full day interruption of uh, interruption? I think, I think so, or up until we figure out another option that, yes, I think so. So if you want to do Q, QA, Matea, Matea, go to Benzinga Pro, send an email to powerhour at benzinga.com with some stuff that needs to be fixed. And that's a way. And then you can write your background. Give it like three or four bullet points of your background. OK, um, that would be great. Thanks, guys. Awesome show today. Have a great day. I have to uh, do a call in a minute. So we're going to pass you off to the next show. And hopefully you don't leave us and you stay all day. And um, yeah, that's it. Zing out.